Good morning, folks. Everything new under the sun. I literally am doing the video with my coffee in front of me. I was up late last night getting some work done. So I've got my coffee with me. Usually drink my coffee. And before I do the video, we're going to take a look at a few articles here. First, we're going to start off with the peace plan one. Uh, so this is from uh, haaretz.com. U.S. Mideast Envoy Greenblatt, we may postpone publication of the peace plan to November. So another delay of the peace plan, <clears throat> and this is getting very, very late in the game now, and I think it's all part of, well, I know it's all part of uh, God's uh, planning. Uh, he says, uh, let's see, uh, U.S. Special Envoy said Sunday that the Trump administration may delay the publication of the long-awaited peace plan to November 2019 because of all the other delays, and again, hoping that uh, Netanyahu is able to put together a coalition government in September. Greenblatt made the remark during an interview uh, with uh, Yakov Katz, the editor-in-chief of the Jerusalem uh, Post. Uh, let's see. Concerning the peace plan, uh, Greenblatt said that Trump's team may have published the blueprint uh, this summer had Israel not announced that it was headed for a new election in September. So it's all because uh, of these elections. He added that there is a limit to how far Arab states will go with Israel. Since they don't want to sell it to the Palestinians, we are, going to, we are not going to push any country to go further than they are comfortable. So this is, again, I think this is a perfect setup uh, for um, the Antichrist for the seven-year uh, period where the Antichrist comes along and confirms a covenant. Uh, it looks like this is not going to go anywhere, and it's going to be delayed uh, forever. Yeah, it does look like November's, uh, November has to be the last time. You know, Are the, are the elections not going to work again in Israel? Um, that there's not going to be a Netanyahu government uh, or a government of any sort in there to deal with? Um, I don't know. What I... Uh, I think we're getting uh, near the end of the time uh, where uh, they're going to be able to do anything when this has been delayed so long. Um, so I think it's it's a plan that's uh, basically never going to be revealed effectively. And isn't that the perfect one for the Antichrist to come along and, and uh, reveal the plan that was never revealed, if you will, and confirm it? So uh, very interesting stuff uh, about uh, the peace plan. So November is a time frame now. Take a drink of coffee. Here's an interesting one, and you speak about, you think about uh, how, uh, where the U.S. is in end-time Bible prophecy. How are they removed from end-time Bible prophecy? Apparently, we're ramping up cyber attacks on Russia's electrical grid, and uh, you know that Russia's going to retaliate for this. And so I could see uh, Russia retaliating by triggering uh, a, a, a cyber attack on North America's electrical grid. And uh, that would trigger economic collapse, which would take down all the rest of the, um, you know, free democratic uh, Western nations. And so this is interesting. U.S. ramps up online attacks on Russian power grid. This is a scary thing. The U.S. is stepping up digital incursions into Russia's electrical power grid, uh, in a, it says, in a warning to Putin, citing current and former government officials, while the U.S. has probed the Russian grid since 2012, and there's no evidence that it has been turned off. The Trump administration's strategy has shifted more toward offense with the deployment of U.S. computer code inside the grid and other targets. The question you've got to ask is, why are they doing this now? Are we in a particular fight with Russia at this point? I, I, I didn't think so, but there you go. The administration declined to disclose a specific score to the report. However, National Security uh, Advisor Bolton said publicly on Tuesday that the U.S. is taking a broader view to say to Russia or anybody else that's engaged in cyber operations against us, you will pay a price. So this is more tit for tat, I guess. They're hitting us with cyber attacks regularly. That's a, a kind of a known issue coming from China, Russia. And so we're hitting them back now. And that's that's a very interesting uh, situation, escalation even, uh, in retaliation. And uh, will Russia put up with that? Especially if we're successful where they haven't been. Uh, in terms of uh, disrupting their power grid, um, then certainly they would come out. This is an article here. Russia experts 2017 prophecy about the nuclear threat of Russiagate is coming true. Um, um, so the whole Russiagate thing uh, occurred, and uh, the suggestion is there's retaliation there uh, for Russiagate, 
Um, but the article goes on to say that um, you know Trump doesn't know about this and that these are military operations, or op operations, so Trump doesn't actually know. Pentagon suggests countering cyber attacks uh, with nuclear arms. It says this is from January 2016. Uh, 20, 2018, January 16, 2018. Uh, and so this was a news article uh, from back then. Um, it says, uh, Trump has not been briefed in any detail about the steps to place implants or software code that can be used uh, for surveillance inside the Russian grid. So he is being kept out uh, of the specifics uh, so that he can claim he doesn't know anything about the military operations. But um, likely he said, you know, tit for tat. Yeah, you know, if Russia's attacking us, um, then let's come back at them. And that's what this article is about. I'll put the link in the description. You can check it out. Um, it says, Trump is in a bit of a bind now. The escalation has already been put in place, which will likely see a, a, an equal response from Moscow if it isn't scaled back. But the scale, but scaling it back would mean a whole new wave of shrieking alarmism from the political media class with a conspiracy theory that just won't die. So if he rolls or scales back uh, cyber attacks, the media will say, well, Trump's in collusion. He's rolling them back because he's cooperating with Russia. Uh, so it goes on. So he can't win, really. It says, um, it won't die no matter how much evidence is mounted against us that that, that uh, Trump is a controlled puppet of the Kremlin. So if he rolls it back, they're, uh, the, the people against him are just going to say he's just a puppet and he's rolling it back because Putin told him to. All right, let's go on here. Iran announces it will uh, reach allowed enriched uranium limits in 10 days. So we're getting close to the, the point in time where um, they've reached their limits and they can really, at any time now even, start making dirty bombs. And uh, soon enough, they'll be able to make uh, full-out nuclear weapons as well based on the enriched uranium. Iran announced that it will uh, reach enriched uranium le levels within 10 days. Iran is expected to announce further steps to reduce its compliance with the 2015 nuclear deal after halting aspects of compliance. So this is another false flag uh, option, uh, opportunity for uh, the countries against it. Uh, we've had Israel um, come out and say that uh, Iran was the uh, um, uh, the culprit in the tanker attacks. We have Saudi Arabia. There's an article uh, come out about um, uh, Saudi Arabia is blaming Iran. Of course, the United States is blaming Iran. So we have all these countries blaming Iran. We have all the military buildup around uh, Iran, and so would you, you would expect <clears throat> that uh, this is this is really a buildup, getting the the public ready for um, a strike or retaliation in some sort, regardless of whether it's a false flag or not. And, and many people are calling it a false flag. Um, I don't know that it is yet. Um, this this would be one thing that I think Iran uh, would uh, want to do. They'd want to stir it up. They they wouldn't want to go um, overtly and bomb these tankers, um, but little bombs here and there to keep the tension high, to keep the cost of oil increasing, to keep pressure on the U.S. etc. Um, against these sanctions. Um, it, it seems like a, 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 a quite a plausible thing for Iran to be doing. It says, under the deal, Iran was uh, prohibited from accumulating more than 300 kilograms of enriched uranium to 3.67% level, and from enriching uranium beyond the level such as uh, to be, uh, such as to the 20% level that it had done before uh, the deal. So they, they are uh, getting ready for nuclear weapons. And again, they could just, uh, they may or may not have a weapon already from North Korea, but they could certainly get it. Uh, quite quickly, I, I suspect. All right, let's look at this one. Um, more trouble in Damascus. Damascus is slowly in our, our time scale becoming a ruinous heap. If you look at the, the time scale of the history of man, 6,000 years, um, all this destruction of Damascus will have happened in the last 50 years, um, maybe even less than that, um, from when the... Uh, um, the uprising began uh, in Damascus, the civil unrest, uh, etc. And so really, you could suggest that in the last 20 years, it's been going on. And uh, Syria is, uh, I mean, uh, Damascus itself is a, a nearly nearly a ruinous heap. There are still places uh, standing where Bashar Assad has control. Um, but the, the city, uh, large parts of the city, are a ruinous heap already. And no one's living there because bombs continue to go off. 
large explosion in military zone of Damascus. Syrian state media gives no further detail on cause. Hebrew language media reports blast uh, was at an ammunition store, it says. The blast heard in Damascus uh, is a result of an explosion in a, in a military zone. As, uh, someone from the Asana news agency said, the explosion uh, was said to have been at an ammunition store in an area of the city housing military facilities. So um, you talk about the destruction of Damascus. There's military facilities right inside the city of Damascus. So when the whole city becomes a ruinous heap, you kind of see why, because um, it would be very plausible that a country would be going after the military, and they have no option but to hit directly inside Damascus, because that's where the military um, and the munitions dumps are, right inside the city. You don't need Saddam Hussein's weapons of mass destruction buried in the city, necessarily. They already have uh, military ammunition uh, stores uh, in the middle of the city. So any country that's looking to deal with uh, Syria and Bashar Assad uh, effectively needs to take out Damascus, which is very interesting. Said it was not immediately known what caused the blast. The explosion wounded eight pro-government fighters, um, and that happened in the pre-dawn, uh, or in the pre-dawn hours of uh, Wednesday morning. Syrian state media reported that Israel fired several missiles toward a mountain near the Golan border, according to Syrian and Lebanese reports. The target of the strikes was infrastructure set up by the Iranian-backed Hezbollah. Some more strikes by uh, Israel um, there. Israel's not commenting, of course, but. Um, Netanyahu did come out and say uh, that they will actively go after countries and, and preemptively strike uh, where they feel the need. So that is your uh, prophecy update uh, for uh, the situation, the world situation. Uh, on top of this, we have um, a famine and hunger, uh, earthquakes in diverse places, growing of birth pains. Um, Bible prophecy is being fulfilled before our eyes, and I think uh, I think we're getting closer and closer. This peace plan is a very interesting thing to watch. It's now apparently been postponed. Um, I haven't read yet about the Bahrain um, Economic Summit that the countries, countries were taking part in. Um, but the, And that's part of the peace plan. But the actual revealing of it uh, is going to be uh, very interesting. And um, also, watch for the timeline. Is, is there a timeline? Is there a seven-year period baked into the peace plan? Uh, or is that uh, something that the Antichrist is going to inject into um, the covenant when he confirms it? Is he going to say, well, we're going we're gonna to do this, we're going to uh, implement this peace plan for seven years, and after the seven years we'll come to a final status agreement of Jerusalem. So look for that when this happens. And note that maybe it's not going to be revealed in November. Maybe the Antichrist comes before that. That's certainly plausible. Um, this uh, fall period is going to be a very interesting time. The 70 shepherds of Israel still in play as Netanyahu is still, um, uh, still, still in government. So he's still the leader uh, of Israel at this time, um, even though he couldn't put together a government um, because the uh, elections have been postponed. So thanks for watching, guys. I'll leave it there. I'll put the links in the description. And uh, as always, we'll see you guys uh, in the next video.